got the PowerPoint. Good evening and welcome to the Gathering and Quarantine. I'm Terry Malisi. Hi, Mike. Hey, Terry. Thanks for having me back again. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. And the weather's been beautiful. So that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it sort of feels like I'm uh, actually near the Coliseum right now. And, you know, it's nice and sunny out. And yes, look at this day. Look at this beautiful scenery. I know it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And tonight's <laughs> menu is going to bring you there. I, can't I wait. want to welcome everybody to tonight's show. I hope all is well and that uh, you're all enjoying the weather as well. And um, to welcome you to tonight's show, When in Rome, have a Roman dinner. So tonight we're going to be having. The menu is really interesting. I'm cooking five different things tonight. We're missing one on the lineup, but we're having an antipasto, which is a marinated mozzarella with sun-dried tomatoes and anchovies. For the primo, we're having fusilli and no cooked tomato sauce. For the secondo, we're having lamb steaks. For the contomi, we're having cauliflower and wine. And then for the dolce, we're having... Italian cream cake. So the primo is the first course of the main meal. The antipasto is the first thing actually that you sit down to. Then you have the primo, then you have the secondo, which is the second course of the meal, which is meat, fish, egg, cheese. Your contomi is the side dish or dishes. And then your dolce is the dessert. And they're served in that order. So no matter where you go, that's how it's done. And I want to make a disclaimer right away because we know I'm not a great baker and I am attempting to make a double layer cake tonight. So, you know, chop, chop, we got to get this going because you can see I've got frosting uh, material over here. Sure. But for this Italian cream cake, I have one box of white cake mix, four eggs, one and a half cups of heavy cream. We have a uh, half a stick of butter melted. We have one and three and a half ounces of package of instant vanilla pudding mix. We have a cup of chopped pecans, two cups of flaked coconut. And like I said, we've got vanilla frosting here with extra coconut and pecans for the top. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take my um, cake mix and put this in a bowl. And then I'm going to take my melted butter and add that. And then I'm going to mix it. Okay, now, there's not much in here to mix as of yet. But that won't be long. Trust me. Now in this little bowl here, I'm going to add my four eggs. And then I'm going to, with the fork, you know, just kind of beat them like I'm making scrambled eggs. And then to that, I'm going to add my heavy cream. And I'm just going to mix those to get them nice and incorporated. Okay. And then I'm going to put this over here for a minute. And then I'm going to add this to the cake batter. Okay, not so fast so that you know you end up with a big mess. Like you know, I've been known to make. And it's resembling batter, which I guess is a good thing, right? Yeah, looks like it. And uh, I have to say, if you're in a hurry and you want to, you know, keep it quick, cake mix is not a bad way to go. Or if you're like me and you're not a great baker, or you don't bake that often, there you go. So, 
Okay. This, I'm going to, woo! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, that's good. We're going to have uh, a little frosting on. <laughs> oh, and I just cleaned my rugs. We're going <laughs> to. We're going to have a little uh, frosting on the uh, fusilli over there. So let me get these out of the way. Okay. Now we're going to take our vanilla pudding. And we're going to mix that together. And, you know, you just want to. Mix it in. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. And then we're going to fold in the coconut and the pecans. And fold, it's you're supposed to not really mix it. Right. You just, just keep layering it over and over again. Over and over again. Yep. Right. So you can see what that looks like, right? Yeah, I can't wait. That's pretty interesting. Okay. So let me get these out of here. And then I'm, gonna, I'm always making a mess. Then we're going to take these two nine inch pans and we're going to. Put half the batter in each pan. Okay. So I want to say hi to a couple of people. I know Tracy's watching. Hi, Tracy. I want to say Tara and Abby and Kate are watching. Hi, guys. I believe Pat is watching. Hi, Pat. Hope all is well. And I just want to remind them, if you want to say hello, just, uh, and you're on YouTube, just uh, send us a chat and I'll get yeah. it off to Terry. Always and, I like to happy. and I want to take this moment too. Uh, you can always find this whole recipe for all our meals on the description of every single show. Okay, I'm going to pop this in a 350 oven for 30 minutes. All right. Okay, and I've got my water heating up for the fusilli. I'm going to turn it up a little because I do want to cook my spaghetti. <clears throat> okay, there you go. I'm going to put the light on because we know how much I like <laughs> seeing things going on. Now, that was a dolce. We started with the last thing we're going to eat. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to put together the antipasto, which is the marinated mozzarella with sun-dried tomatoes and anchovies. Now, what we're going to start with, I have a pound and a half of mozzarella balls, okay? Yep. And then I'm going to marinate it with the oil and the garlic and the red wine vinegar and the basil, wow. fresh basil torn. Now you can use dried, absolutely. Yeah, it's no fun though. Even I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and what's so nice about this is when it's done marinating, we're going to yep. use it as a dressing. Very good. On the antipasto. So I am going to, and uh, I'm going to put this in the fridge. I'm going to get rid of, well, I won't get rid of those right yet. Put that there. We should have a camera on the inside. So when I go in, I can go like that. <laughs> All right, well, well, we'll we'll work that out. We'll, we'll get yeah. that figured out with the budget. And here I have a pound of arugula. I'm going to just 
played it around, right? Yep. And I'm going to take my onion rings and put those off to the side. Make a border. Now, this is one salad that I am very familiar with. And one thing, it's all about presentation when it comes to an antipasto. <laughs> no matter how yeah. you make it. No matter how you make exactly. it. It's, this this is the one that you present. Um, I was doing a senior cooking show down at Golden Pod with my dear friend, the late Reno Bacci. And he always talked about how wonderful, you know, an antipasto was. And an antipasto was made if you had, if you were bringing a boy home to meet the family kind of thing, or, you, you know, or finally meet, you, you know, you hear so much about the boy, you finally, you know, because you get the court, it goes on before you meet the family. Yeah. And he, his story, the, one of the greatest stories that he always told was, you always knew if the people liked you, if you went over there for dinner and they made you an antipasto. Isn't that if they, wonderful? If they did not make you an antipasto, they did not like you. <laughs> so that, that was You know, one of, the Italians, you know, they could be subtle, but they did get their message across. I, right? So, right. Uh, so Tara and Abby say hi and love you. Hey, well, I love you too. And Can't Tracy, wait to see you again. Tracy, my family and I are enjoying the show. <gasps> love you. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so I added the sun-dried tomatoes yep. as well as the anchovies, as you can see. So I'm going to move that over here and remove these. And wash my hands because those anchovies. Oh, my goodness, the anchovies. Are a when little I, oily. When I was in high school making pizza, the... Person says, uh, oh, can I get a large pizza, half anchovy, half pepperoni? And I says, <laughs> you know the whole thing is going to taste like anchovy, so you might as well put it on the whole thing. Well, yeah, it does <laughs> and that's the true. oil that's travels, true. mixes it with the cheese oil, and yeah, yeah. But with the, um, with the flavors there, you've got the real saltiness with yes. the anchovies. You've got the sweetness of the sun-dried tomatoes, right. the tanginess of the red onions. The pepper taste from the arugula. And then when you get that mozzarella, that marinated mozzarella there, that's just a wonderful thing. It's gonna be awesome. So here is a little lesson on fusilli. You'll see, and the gal, uh, what is it, the Phantom Gourmet this past weekend at a restaurant, the short corkscrew. You yep. know, some restaurant said, oh, and here's our fusilli. No, this is fusilli. Yeah, the <laughs> other, oh, you mean, wait a second, I was getting ready for, for my Italian night and I get the. You've yeah. got the corkscrew. That's that's the rotini, <laughs> not fusilli. Uh, okay, the there you go, there you go. <laughs> this right here is the fusilli, which is right. the, like corkscrew, long strand of spaghetti. Yes. So. For the fusilli with no cooked tomato sauce. And you've seen me do this before, too. Yes. And for the summer, it's so wonderful because you don't have to cook it. You don't have to heat up the kitchen other than heating up the water to boil the uh, spaghetti. Sure. We've got a pound and a half of tomatoes chopped. We have one garlic clove chopped. We have four teaspoons of red wine vinegar. We have a quarter cup of shaved Parmesan cheese, and we have one cup of fresh basil leaves torn again. So let me check that water. That is coming up to a boil. And I'm going to put these in the pan and cook these. Get this going. Okay. Now, like you said, you didn't want to heat up the kitchen, and here you are, we're baking a cake. Well, we're baking the cake for the show, but if you were doing this at home for tonight's dinner, you probably would have made that cake in the morning or the night before. Definitely when, could have done when it's, it. Last when, time, when right? it's cooler. Yep. And, uh, but this meal here is a great spring and summer meal uh, because other than, you know, heating your water up. 
Absolutely. Yep, I'm just going to put this over here. Um, and let me push these down. You want to put 10 minutes on your timer, Mike? I have 10 minutes on the timer. Good, good, good. Okay, and you want to, of course, when you're cooking pasta, move it around a little bit. Yep. Now, do um, you salt up your water? No. Your pasta? No. I don't. I don't. A lot of people like it. A lot of people don't. Yep. Um, you know, I, I there's two methods. One, nothing at all. Two, you make it salty like the sea. You know, there's yep. like really uh, no yeah. in between. You, you yep. do it one way or the other. Yep. So you want to mash your tomatoes. So I thought maybe this plastic one would work, but I think the uh, metal one is working just fine. Okay. You want to put up another picture? Yeah, I'm gonna. I was gonna uh, suggest. Uh, starting with the uh, photos for oh, oh here's our music how that happen and again the coliseum i'm going to add these other ingredients to the sauce and just continue to mash along so when in rome you do like the romans do and why not dress like a roman centurion yes now when you go to the <laughs> coliseum <laughs> they have those um those warriors Yep. And you can take pictures with them, and they put you in that garb. They put the helmet on you. Oh, that's awesome. And Chelsea and I did that, and it was really funny. That is great. Yeah. So what year did you go? How long ago was that trip? Okay, so I've been twice. My first time was in the 80s, and then my second time was when she graduated from BU, and that was 2012. Wow. That was for her graduation from college. That's very cool. My, uh, Alexis uh, visited Rome, and she loved it. She did a whole tour of Europe one summer uh, in between uh, classes, and uh, she said Rome was fantastic. I'll tell you, students, they have it made. They go and they study abroad be yeah. it you know paris rome wherever and uh what a great opportunity there's a nice aerial view of uh the coliseum here now look how big that is is that crazy it's amazing yeah it and is then there's a picture of uh chelsea there <clears throat> now oh, yeah, chelsea's i get that one this yeah. uh this night shot different times during the year, they light it up with different colored lights. And the first time I went, um, there were purple and and um, yellow lights in there. And with the backdrop of the blue of the sky, sure. it was just beautiful. Yeah, it almost looks like fire. Oh. But that picture where Chelsea is standing. Yeah, hold that right now. I'll get that right up here for everyone um, to see. Yeah, that's um, you can well that's on the outside. Oh, yeah. oh my little baby! There you go. But but see that that one, you can see we're at the bottom of it pretty much, right. and that was the bottom where all the fighters and the lions that were all kept before going out to uh, entertain the crowd. Right, and I can see where you know the underneath all the tunnels that are now exposed. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, oh, my goodness. And uh, here's a nice outside shot of it. Yep, yep. We took that. Well, I took it. Mm -hmm. That's that's crazy. And, of course, the last one here it looks like it's sunset, I'm guessing. It was. It was because we were on our way um, for an early dinner. Okay, so now how easy is that? The sauce is done. That's it. It's yeah. it, it, it's almost like a, a it, not to change this to these, but it's like a salsa. Yes. You know, it's all it exactly. is is a salsa. Yep. Now, I'm going to heat up this. Oh, just let me poke around with the fusilli. Ah, it's coming along. Now, how long does fusilli usually take? Is well, that the 10 you know, minutes? Is that what we did the 10 minutes for? 10 minutes, 12 minutes. 
it's a heavier noodle, right? Right. So, yeah, it's a little longer than normal. Yeah, it's all different. It all depends how you know what the base is that they used uh, uh, in how in the thickness, of course. Yep. So every everything's different because you can get raviolis, and whether you get them frozen or or fresh, you know the time. To, I mean, fresh ones take longer than frozen ones. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's every everything's different. And then you think like, oh, here's linguini that takes you know nine to eleven minutes. And then you get something that you think is smaller, like an elbow, and that takes 13 minutes. Right. Well, it's, it's a different pasta. It's, I mean, oh, I can't even go how many pastas oh, there are. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, and a lot of people think, well, why do you have the different pastas? And it's like, it's basically, it started from because of the type of meal. What you're going to have in your soups, what you're going to have in your, your dinners and whatever. It's, it was developed for a plate. Uh -huh. And then, then it grows from there. So exactly. like fusilli you use for this plate, but you can use it for other things. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're not going to make fusilli and meatballs. <laughs> you know, you're going to use rigatoni. You're going to use spaghetti or linguine. Yeah. yeah. So I've got right here yep. for my contomi dish, cauliflower and wine. I have a head of cauliflower chopped, two tablespoons of olive oil, a half a cup of dry red wine, two garlic cloves chopped, and a quarter cup of pecorino romano cheese. And pecorino is that a brand or is it a type? No, of it's a type. It's a type. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like romano, parmigiano, or is, Pecciano, uh, or Asiago. Is my like my, as my kids would call it, the stinky Pecorino. cheese. <laughs> what? Oh, they call it the stinky cheese because when, <laughs> you know, when, uh, you know, you get the shakers, you know, of course you're feeding kids, you, yeah, you know, yeah. give them the fancy stuff. So one time I picked out Romano instead of Parmesan and they were flipped. They noticed oh. the difference right away. Once they <laughs> shook it out of their plate, they yes. said, wow, th dad, what, something's wrong with the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put this, uh, olive oil in the pan. Now this is going to mix nicely with the wine. When you think about it, it's um, it's kind of like a salad dressing if you think about it, sure. because the wine could be like the vinegar. Yep, absolutely. So we are going to cook this. We're going to saute it. Now, do you saute it to soften or do you brown saute it to brown it? To soften. To soften, okay. Yeah. Yep. And let's see. Uh, oh, boy. Those cakes. Now, did I ask you to time the cakes? See, that's, that's what a Sweet. not a baker I am, right? No, you did not ask me to. What are you looking for cake time? Yeah, cake time. I think we put it in. Around almost 10 past. Yeah, that's what I use this open. That sound good? Yep. Okay. So you have a minute and a half left on your pasta, give or take. Okay, good. Silly. And what I'll do is I'll uh I'll test it. So hey, so I, I found uh, you know, of course you know how I like to do researches when you're doing places I don't know anything about. Modern Rome has 280 fountains and more than 900 churches. That's just in Rome. <laughs> 900 churches. And yeah. one of the things that I love, and of course everyone knows, the Romans had built a road network of 53,000 miles by, by the early 4th century. Each Roman mile was about 4,800 feet and marked by milestones, giving birth to the saying, all Lead, all roads, all lead, roads to lead to Rome. Yeah. And Pretty you know what kind stuff. of dogs they used to help with their building? No, they don't. Work dogs, um, Rottweilers. Really? I wow. had three of them. I know them very well. I love and Rottweilers. They're and great you dogs. might not know this, but Dobermans were bred from Rottweilers and Whippets. Wow, did I know that? Yeah. 
but that makes, the, that makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, the the Roddies go back way, way back to the Romans, and you know, most likely the Germans as well, because it's a German type dog. Well, um, you're talking about dogs. The law in Rome allows cats to live without disruption in the place they were born. Wild cats can be climbing the walls of the Colosseum and sleeping amongst the ruins of the Forum. Uh, so if they were born there, they are protected by law and you leave them alone. There you go. Pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. I'm going to add the garlic. And then the wine. And you'll notice I didn't put the garlic in first, right? right? Yep. It's because I didn't want it to brown. Okay, so we're going to get that garlic flavor, but it's not going to be so intense. Right. I've been, uh, I've been doing some cooking at home, and a lot of times I used to start right off with the garlic and the onions right away, and yeah. I realized that I was burning them, and I was killing a lot of flavor, and that, you know, all you needed in there is for a couple minutes before you're ready to take it out in some, in some dishes. You know, of course, you want to, when you're making your base for your uh, uh, pasta sauce or your gravy, you know, you may use it earlier, and of course, it sits in there as the pasta cooks. However, when you make your base, it only takes a couple of minutes to right. uh, use up your, your thing. I, I mean, there's some recipes that you roast it for like 20 minutes in like a in like a tin foil wrap. You know, it, well then it's a whole different flavor. Then what you're doing is you're turning it into like a sweet paste type consistency yes. where you spread that on bread. Exactly. Right. Or a whole different, right. Right, right, right. Um, that cauliflower smells amazing. I bet. Check the fusilli. I have to tell you. I was just poking it around. I'm going to leave it in, I think, four more minutes. All right. All right. That was 10 minutes, Mike? That was 10 wow. minutes. Wow. And how are the cakes? <laughs> I remember the old days when you had to be careful in the kitchen when the cake was being baked. You know, don't, don't make any know. noises. Don't jump. I know. It's like, look out. <laughs> look out. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up my pan because, and I'm doing the cast iron pan, Mike. So I have to get out my tin foil because I'm going to have to cover it sure. um, because I don't want my smoke alarm going off. And that certainly could be the case. Well, Terry, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I watch, oh, there's that music again. So we got. <laughs> That's quite all right. I'll never get tired of that music. Well, I want to, I want to show you so you can uh, fix your microphone. I'm going to share this photo. Talk about this one. Oh, it did. It it. Yep, it's it's dropped. It dropped. Is it not working? Right there it is. Yes, I think it just fell down. Oh my goodness! Oh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. <laughs> so, what photo was this? Okay, that's the forum. That's the forum. Yeah. Yep, where all those uh, special things took all those meetings, government meetings. The death of Caesar, right? Oh, yeah, the Senate. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yep. And how about this one? What a beautiful pop. Uh, oh, that's the Trevi Fountain. Now, for that, you go down the Spanish steps. You walk down all the Spanish steps, and then at the bottom, that's what you come up with. I want to show, there they are. Wow. <laughs> I want to show my lamb steaks here. This is my secondo dish. And oh, you ready? Hold on. There we go. Yep. So we have the secondo dish here, lamb steaks. Um, they were marinating. I marinated them overnight in two garlic cloves chopped, two teaspoons of rosemary, 
and a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. Um, and it smells really nice. So I am going to come over here and I am going to put those in cast iron pan. And right away I can hear it sizzling. I don't know if you can. And it's funny because when I bought my lamb steaks, they didn't hold together very well, as you can see. So yep. I decided to use two shoulder chops as well. And I love lamb. So this is going to be a nice combination for me. Um, it'll be a nice combo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cover it because you know my fan is going to go off, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay, let me check my fusilli. Oh, that really looks good. And it feels good, feels beautiful. So I am going to take that out. You know, I was loving that uh, picture of that fountain. Yeah. And I learned with all those, you know, 280 fountains that nearly 700,000 euros worth of coins are tossed into the uh, the Trevi fountain each year, just the Trevi, each year. And all the proceeds are donated to charity to help those That's that wonderful. are in need. Yep. Just so one because... fountain, 700,000. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those... Um photo op sure shops uh we have them i just i <laughs> i have photos from that trip on another computer that uh that's another story <laughs> <laughs> okay so i am going to take my sauce and i am going to mix my you see, Lee. Now, is that beautiful? Now, this I could eat all day, right? Yeah, you don't need a microwave for it, that's for sure. Oh, my God. Absolutely. And no cooking. No co See, there goes the fan. Yeah, there it goes. No cooking for the sauce. But a nice light um, dish. And then you just take your shaved Parmesan and put that over. That looks great. Out. And this smells amazing. I have to tell you, I use all that basil. Yeah, there's nothing like fresh basil on, on anything, whether you're making a sandwich or a pizza. I know, I know, truly. Yep. You people that have gardens, and I know I'm going to give kudos to Pat if he's watching. He just finished his garden this, this week, and it's just beautiful. So all of you who are blessed to have a garden, you're so fortunate because you have all of those spices and vegetables at your ready. Right. And yeah, there's I, nothing like homegrown. You're absolutely right. I wish I had the talent to do it. Now, for the lamb steaks, you want to let them go. You want to let them sear on each side. And I'm not going to finish them in the oven, so I'm going to let them really cook. And the cauliflowers looking really nice and smelling really nice, too. And this goes over here okay um and of course i want to bring out <laughs> what i used in the dishes good old chianti oh yeah minus oh. the weaving and the candles <laughs> all right are, i tell you those are i tell you the, <laughs> it's the most known centerpiece in any italian restaurant 
is the bottle canting with the candle in it. <laughs> Absolutely. And these glasses are from Italy. And aren't oh, they beautiful? And it's just a great exhibit of the beautiful things they create. So we're ready to go with that. Um, let's see. Oh, boy. Now the cake. I think I'm going to give the cake maybe five more minutes. Oh, we might actually get to see that done. Sorry? We might actually get to see that done. <laughs> oh, boy. Time. Let's see. I'm going to, yep, I'm, nope, I'm going to let these go a little longer. Yep. Now let those go for a few minutes longer. Turn up the heat a bit. This is good. Okay. Um, let's get my marinated matzo balls out. Okay, bring this back to center stage. Okay. And you know, it's so funny because, well, it's not funny, it's wonderful. When you go to Italy and you're walking around a lot of places, especially in Ostia, they, um, they have the dishes right outside so that when you come in, you see what they're making that night. Wow. It's like, oh yeah, I think I'll have that. And it's a great way to get your appetite going. Oh, so what, what kind of meals did you enjoy over there? Everything. There was, there's not a bad meal, no matter what you had. And that is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to pour, just drizzle the rest of this marinade on the salad so that when we go to eat this, It'll be there. we're just putting it in a plate and ready to go. That's right. right. And then you get a little lazy <laughs> and do it like that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna check these. That's good. Okay, these are browning up nicely. Very nice. Yep. So there's a, uh, we're gonna have a lot of lamb in this house. And no complaints from me. <laughs> okay, and I want to give this just another quick stir before I take one more look at the cakes and then I'm going to try. Oh, here's the thing. I think they're ready to come out, right? Yep. Here's the thing. They have to cool before I take them out of the pan. I think that's... <laughs> I think that's how it goes. <laughs> it's usually the trick, or you put them on a cooling rack. Sometimes you can put them out upside down yeah. on a cooling rack and then, yeah, maybe just stick them in the freezer for a couple minutes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to, that's going to uh, help me tonight for sure. Ooh. Ooh. You know, they look, they look like they can use, actually, one needs to be in there a little more, but look at that. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, I'm gonna let that cool down for two seconds. See now, my mother, my mother would have went to the closet, to the broom, grabbed the straw out, stick it <laughs> in the middle to see if it's stuck to the straw. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have some toothpicks. Uh, I, exactly. We didn't have the toothpicks, but she had to just to take it off the broom. I mean, yeah, I love it. I love it. I have straws over there. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that. that looks about done. We'll take that. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. I'm supposed to know, right? It's my cooking show. <laughs> well, you cook it. You, it's but not we a all baking, know I'm not a baker. It's so. not a baking show, that's for sure. But you do not try. Not a baker, but I try. Okay, I'm going to let that go. Good, good, good. So. Can I give I it dare? the tip? Yeah, why not? 
What do you get to lose? Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Oh. That's what the frosting's for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to do this a couple of times. <laughs> Look at this. Oh. There you go. All right. That's kind of a cake, right? <laughs> Better than I can do, that's for sure. Um, okay, so that's the first step, right? So now I've got some frosting, right? Yep. That like that. Whoa. <laughs> maybe not so, maybe gingerly so it doesn't fall apart. Yep. And it is an Italian cream cake, right? Yikes. And you know, I've said this before, my desserts are ugly, but they do taste good. Let me see if taste I can good. taste. Hold it. Yeah. It works. Tastes like cake. Tastes like cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to give that a few more minutes. That's fine. Let's check these. Really good. Really, really good. And we don't mind our meat done a little past the medium. So that's quite all right. I'm going to plate my cauliflower. Okay, here we go. This was a big cauliflower, I have to say. Okay. There's our cauliflower. Yeah. That over here. Okay. Oh, we're looking good on the time, right? Well, we got plenty of time. Good, good, good. Okay. And the lamb is actually getting to be pretty perfect. Now is Rome big is Rome big uh, the restaurant's big on the seafood or is that just the coastal? Oh yeah, no, no. Absolutely. Yeah, they're huge. There's a good mixture of everything. Everything. How about pizza? They do a lot Sorry? of pizza there. Do they do pizza there? Oh, the best. The absolute the best? best in the world. <laughs> but you know what really got me? My first time over there, I uh, it was in the morning and we went into a shop to have some, you know, espresso, morning stuff and juice. And they had pizza and they had hard boiled eggs on the pizza. And they were like eating it for breakfast. Wow. And I thought, wow, you know, that's really interesting. And it's got to be really good. Now, you know, these days, they're putting eggs on hamburgers, right? Fried uh, eggs and the yolk yeah. drips off. I kind of don't get that. I just had one Monday. But people love it, right? It's great. Yeah. I'm going to have to try it. It's a bacon, lettuce, egg, cheese, tomato. Oh, so good. Okay, this guy is not jiggling anymore. There you go. I'm going to shut the oven off. <laughs> okay, now. 
I think I ought to pour some wine because this cake thing is really stressing me out. <laughs> right? Yep. I don't know. I'll have that ready to go. And of course, this is from Italy. For sure. Okay, so let's see about this. Okay, we may have better luck with this. Yeah, we'll find out. All right, I'm fingers across. Fingers across. And maybe what I should do is kind of tap it. Get the gamma know. out. <laughs> you do more baking than I do, so. <laughs> Ta-da! Yay, success. Look at that. Oh, and the coconut smells amazing. Oh, my. Now, here's the thing. How do I do this? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you got to figure it out. Wow. That's not bad, right? It looks like it. <laughs> it looks like a. It looks cake, like it. Right? Looks like, I see two layers there. Yeah, you see two layers. And you know, I'm using my spurtle over here. I was like, oh, gee, what can I use? <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, let me use that thing. <laughs> oh, boy. But this just goes to show anyone can do it, right? Yep. You don't have to be a pro and you don't have to make beautiful desserts for them to be delicious. Right. So I think, I think I should do the sides or not. I'll see if they hold up for you. You'll know what you start. I could try a little, right? Wow. This is really... I don't mean to. Uh... <laughs> yeah, see, I mean, yeah. turn the cake around to help you, Terry. <laughs> and this is what happens when you don't bake a lot. But I'm always willing to give it a try. And I, I've never met a recipe that I didn't think I couldn't do. Right, and it goes back to my motto, if you can read, you can cook. Yep. Baking, however, is an art. I work with this lady who, she is a chocolatier and she makes the most beautiful desserts you've ever seen. Cakes that are just out of this world. And it is a gift. Sure. I have to thank my, my gifts come in other other forms. Yeah, right. <laughs> Certainly not baking. Now, what I'm going to do, look at this. Wow. That's pretty, huh? I guess that's, uh, that doesn't look too bad. And that'll be a nice crunchy thing. And then we're going to take some coconut, right? Yep. Not too much. Now I'm gonna get these out of the way. Make some room over here. And get my lamb out of the oven. Look at that, I made a cake. I think I made a double layer cake. <laughs> In under an hour. <laughs> That's impressive. That's crazy, crazy town. Let's bring the uh, the ticket to crazy town right over here, right? <laughs> okay, so now I need to plate my lamb and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Wow. Yay. I certainly don't want to drop them. 
I tell you, there's nothing like cooking in a cast iron skillet. I Absolutely. Love it. Look at these. Are they beautiful? Yeah, that is so delicious. Yeah. So, oh my. Look they look so this. tender. They look so tender. You, yeah. probably don't, you probably don't even need a knife to cut into them. <laughs> yeah. Look good. So, according to the way they eat, yeah. here is the antipasto. We have the primo, which is the pasta. We have the secondo, which is the lamb. And then the contomi, which is the cauliflower in wine. And then the dolce, the Italian cream cake. And good old Chianti. And I know it's it's a little early, but we can still do some oh, talking. Yes. But I am going to cheer HCAM. Always and you, Mike, cheer with you always. all the time. So now, it, one thing that when people realize when they have the Italian dinner, there is no speed to eating. It is, it's, it's a stretched out event. So when you have your appetite, we'll say your antipasto, that people are picking up and cleaning and whatever. And, and then, all right, here's the next one. You know, there is no, like, all right, you're done with that. Take the plate and bring in the next plate. It's you, your whole dinner time is, oh, uh, you know, like three hours. It to, is. To eat a meal like this. And they do that over there. Yeah, because, they don't rush through anything. Right. Din dinner time is so social. It's a big social event. And they eat late too, right? They're not they do. Early. They do. They, they start at like eight o'clock. Restaurants don't open until late. Right. So they will go home for lunch, take a siesta, yep. go back to work, and then go home before going out again for yeah. dinner. It sounds like the world I want to live in, <laughs> especially the nap pot. I, you know, you can't be yeah, a nap. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the different regions, they're so different. So you'll see them for the shows. You're going to see Ostia. You're going to yeah. see Forenza, which is Florence. You're going to see the Italian Alps. Uh, you're going to see Sicily, Sicilia. And those are the places I've been so far. Sure. But they'll be spaced out. But that's it. I mean, just like California, you know, you've got San Diego, LA, San Francisco, Reading, which brings me to our next episode. I was just going to say, and that is going to be in three weeks on the on June 17th. Is that what it is? June 17th. That's oh, our last yeah. show. Last show before the summer break. Yep. Yep, that's right. That's so, right. Then so, I go on a little hiatus, and I'll be yeah. back in September. So where we where we are uh, traveling to on the seventeenth? I'm gonna say the West Coast. West Coast, huh? One of my favorite places. I have a few. Yeah. Am yeah. I am I am I sensing some avocado? Um, you know, it's funny. I don't think avocados <laughs> on the menu. Which is that, fine. That Which might is fine. be. That might be for L.A. because they're so, you know, oh, hip yeah. down there. Everything's yeah. got to be hip, right? Yeah. No, we're talking cowboy country. Whoa. If that gives you a hint. I, I'm i not going to say anymore. I think I know where you're going with this. I'm loving it. And, you know, you, know you can call it logging country, too, because the area that we're going to is known for its logging. And a particular mountain, so it's uh, fantastic. Cool. Yeah, well, I think that's going to be awesome. So, uh, just to remind everybody, this in past episodes on our YouTube channel, The Gathering, you get to it from hcam.tv slash The Gathering. All the episodes uh, that we've done in quarantine, as well as the big party episodes that uh, Terry has done. Uh, you know, of course, again from the house, but in a lot more detail than shoving it into a one-hour show <laughs> so from start to finish um so everything's there all the menus are online just look at the description portion of the show and and uh, all the recipes uh, ingredients and how to do it is everything there and if you have any questions at all you just send us an email 
uh, at HK, if you go right onto the website, there's a link there to send us an email and get that to Terry. Uh, if you have any questions on a recipe or any ideas for her, because, uh, you know, Absolutely. You know, this... it's, here's the thing. It's not just about my travels. Okay. If you've been someplace that I haven't been, please reach out and say, okay, Terry, I've been to Australia. Why don't you come up with a dinner that you might think I'd enjoy? And then I can go, there you go. and put an Australian dinner together. So that's a challenge for the viewers, yeah, right? No. Because I, I know while you're on hiatus, you're not just going to be taking it easy. You'll be thinking of new show ideas like you always do. Absolutely. And uh, look forward to that. So, well, yeah. Terry, I, I think it's a heck of a job. Thank you. It's beautiful. The cake, the cake's holding up nicely over there. It looks exactly, awesome. Exactly, exactly. And it. a wonderful five course dinner. And now as the Commonwealth is opening back up again, uh, you know, the 29th, uh, we officially technically open and, and come June 15th, the uh, state of emergency will be lifted and we are going to be back to normal. And uh, back at it. I just can't wait for the next series of shows because I'm not going to do it for my living room. I've got to be right there with you. And uh, absolutely. Some of the stuff. So I want to toast H Cam and toast all of you. And thank you for coming by. And I look forward to seeing you again the next time on The Gathering. Cheers to H Cam. <laughs>